My goal here is to just let you know what happened in the episode. If you want word for word, you better go to freaking Lifetime. <laughs> you better go to Lifetime and watch the show. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am going to knock these videos out this weekend. I promise you I will be caught up by Sunday. Please, I hope I will be caught up by Sunday anyway, but that's my goal. It is early in the morning right now. So I'm starting early so I can knock these out. This episode is episode number five and the name of the episode is Take Me Down to Paradise City. Let's get into this recap. In Cancun, Mexico, the honeymoon begins with couples discussing their plan. Lauren suggests a physical activity. She's here with the other couples sitting in a circle and Lauren is suggesting, a, you know, hey, what are, what are we going to do, you know, now that we're in Cancun? Lauren says, you know, Maybe a physical activity. That is the point of the honeymoon, after all, Lauren. What? To do something physical. <laughs> really, Cameron? Anyway, this left Claire visibly uneasy because she's looking at him like, I know you don't think you're getting the nookie right now, okay? Because I barely like you. The couples are saying how much they love each other, how much they like each other, how much whatever. Okay, you know how it is in the beginning. Nobody's saying anything negative at this point. I mean, the most contrasting thing that was said is basically Claire says that her and Cameron they're just two different people you know they're getting to know each other and Cameron just you know says to her you know you're a good sport because you know I can be quite the handful the discomfort between Cameron and Claire is visible jealousy arises as Cameron observes Becca and Austin and everybody else's quote great relationship so Cameron is letting us know like you know I'm looking at these people and I'm like you know, I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. Cameron, I understand, you know, you're all in the same experiment and you're looking and you're like, mm, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with these people. You know, you're, you tend to compare yourself. And truthfully, that's why I miss before how it was with Married at First Sight, because I go way back. I go back to the beginning, honey. I've been watching Married at First Sight since season number one. And, and back then, they didn't have the couples wanting to meet up and make friend coupleships or whatever you want to call it. They just had to deal with this experiment completely on their own as if they were in the real world. And I really miss when Married at First Sight was like that. That's really how it should be because when you get married, you're on your own. You're not here with five other couples or four other couples. So on the third day, we're on the third day of the of, of marriages now, Brennan and Emily tackle some matters over breakfast, financial matters, and Emily pretty much admits that she's not great with money, okay? And she says that she's a workaholic, and that's another thing that, you know, can be an issue. And Brennan is very stern, and he's very, you know, he has a hard emphasis on financial responsibility. And they both laugh about Emily's budgeting struggles, and he's like, I'll look into that, see what the hell you're doing with your money, lady. You know, they basically highlighted their differing approaches to money. And girl, I'm not judging you because I get it. It's very hard when you have bills, you have all these things going on, but then you see something shiny and sparkly and you're like, oh, I really want that. I know I owe this bill, but it's really sparkly. It's really pretty. I really want it. So Claire and Cameron actually have a good time paddle boarding. They actually have fun and they realize that, you know, having fun actually brings them closer together and it was a cute little vibe i really wish that vibe would continue cameron is slick with his mouth and i feel like claire is more of a serious type person she knows how to take a joke i've seen claire joke on many occasions where i found her endearing and i found her funny but cameron didn't take her jokes as jokes so basically cameron wants claire to accept his quote jokes because sometimes they're not funny okay you're just your sarcasm is not funny your insults are not funny more sweet lovey-dovey moments from Becca and Austin. Freaking annoying and sickening. You know, at dinner, it dinner becomes a platform for a serious discussion between Cameron and Claire about therapy. Cameron is believing that he doesn't necessarily have to go out to get therapy, it usually will come to him. Although he's not anti-therapy. And Claire is more of a, you're a go-getter. If you don't go get it, you're not gonna get it type of person. Lauren and Orion share intimate moments and thoughts in the pool, they're just, and of course, it's all positive. Orion expresses the importance of making Lauren feel safe. And they share the excitement about the possibility of adopting children in the future. So they did have a conversation about children. Okay, they do want kids, but they also want to adopt. They move to a hammock for drinks and they're discussing gender roles and financial responsibilities. And they agree on flexibility, but maintain traditional roles to some extent. And, uh, you know, with Lauren expecting Orion to be the provider, which is aligning with his 80-20 preference in a relationship. Okay, I, I prefer 90-10, but shh. 
I'm just saying. Okay, I'm just kidding. The atmosphere takes a sharp turn on this episode right here. Lauren asks Orion if he's ever used the N-word. Orion admits to using this word as youth in the past, singing along to songs with the word, etc. Lauren chooses not to get into it with him about it. She gives him grace. She says, okay, I mean, can I give you a punch for my ancestors? Just joking around. She doesn't delve into the historical significance about the N-word. She doesn't hold it against him. She just lets it go. The tension escalates when Lauren inadvertently makes an offensive joke about the term redskin, unaware of its impact. I've used terms that when I was younger that I didn't even know were derogatory. Redskin? No, I don't think mm. I've ever used that language, but like, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I've actually never, say, I don't even know what redskin means, honestly. Oh, I do. I just looked at your face. It was completely a mistake. She wasn't doing it intentionally. She wasn't, you know, she didn't go out of her way to be offensive. She made a mistake. When she realized that Orion was really offended by what she said, then she apologized. Um, but she was kind of giggly at first, but you know what it is? I really don't think that she was being disrespectful in that moment. I think that she was doing, it was like a nervous laughter. You know how you do something and you're like, oh my God, that kind of laughter. I don't think she was laughing at him. So Orion was very offended and he's like, that was a little rough. And he said, would you like, would you like for me to explain what the term means? Now he gave an explanation and you guys know I love to research. Okay. Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't. But you guys know that I love to do research on these topics as far as the term red skin. Honestly, I never knew what it meant. Orion gave, he gave an explanation about how they used to skin Indians. So where the term came from is, you know, when colonization started, mm -hmm. um, you know, what was more valuable than gold to them was a scalp of an Indian. Mm. And so for that, when you I scalp, that's where that, that's disgusting. Yep. That's absolutely disgusting. And I am not saying at all, this is his culture. He knows more about the culture than I would. So I'm not gonna say that it's incorrect. Most oftentimes when you have a historical word, there will be more than one definition of the word. And so when I did look up this word, I got a lot of information, but I did not get that story. But like I said, it doesn't mean what he said was wrong. It just means I didn't find that part of the story. I honestly think that she was just uncomfortable and she just really just didn't know what the word meant. Okay, and that, that, that thing that she said just slipped out of her mouth. How do you decide whether you feel offended or like it was a joke? Or is there no line, it's just always offended? It's, it's on the delivery. The conversation intensifies as Lauren brings up the way that Orion handled the joke versus when she said it versus when a white man made a joke, which if you can remember, Cameron made a joke about a reservation when they were on the bus. Orion expresses discomfort. Lauren is really standing here trying to understand what topics she should avoid because she's really trying to be culturally sensitive. And Orion emphasizes the need to refrain from jokes about their backgrounds and cultures entirely. So Orion, Oh, Ryan, you literally have used the N-word in the past and you can't show any grace to Lauren? Do you know how disgusting that word is? Do you know that word was used to denigrate and disrespect black people for centuries? And you sit here and you give Lauren absolutely zero grace when she gave you so much grace and so much mercy knowing that you in the past have used the n-word and you can cut this woman no slack and i do not understand does any part of your growing up your child raising when your mama was raising you and growing up and living as a young adult and living as an adult any part of that gave you an idea of what mercy and grace was you need to attend a black church for a few weeks i'm telling you you're gonna hear enough mercy and grace songs you will be full you will understand what mercy and grace means because you have none and I'm going to tell you, Onion, Orion, my bad. I'm going to tell you that you cannot get married to a woman or a man, by the way. I don't think you want a woman. And it's okay if you don't. It's okay if you don't. I'm not shaming you. I'm just saying what it is. That's why you really didn't want to try with Lauren. Because she's not really what you wanted. But that's a whole nother video. But I'm going to need you never to get married again. If you have no mercy and you have no grace when people make mistakes, it was an obvious mistake and she's extremely sorry about it. And you 
that you just keep beating her up. Obeka and Austin share their goofy moments, which is very, at this point, this has not even been what? This not this is, hasn't even been two episodes on a honeymoon for me, and I'm over these two. And they they share this lovey dovey moments like usual, laughing and all this stuff. And Austin admires Becca's strength and composure despite her hidden pain and health struggles. They delve into their childhoods with Becca having a normal upbringing. Austin grew up as an only child, and he expressed a desire to have two children in the future the night continues and you know becca she's not feeling well so she can't get in the pool and she apologizes to austin for that and austin reassures her that it's okay you know i appreciate you just being here so now we're taking becca and austin to the beach it's snack time okay they're discussing their drinking privileges well becca does not drink but austin does drink we're here with brennan and emily and surprisingly, are any of you surprised that they're doing a tequila tasting uh, venture over here at this, I don't know, this tequila place? So Emily talks about her past as a party goer. She went to the top party school. I'm not really surprised by that, Emily. All right. And she claims, however, that her partying is now in the past, which is a damn lie. Because, girl, all you've said all this time is that you're a partier, you're a partier, you're a partier, party. I, mean, I heard party so many freaking times. Party is not an endearing quality when you're looking to be a wife. I'm just saying. I don't know why you think that is. Maybe because you've never been in a relationship, girl. But that's not something you want to keep mentioning. Like, that's something you want to hide, actually. You know, I used to be a party girl. No man wants to make a freaking party girl his wife. I'm just saying. Brennan claims to feel a strong connection with Emily. He senses a balance in their personalities and they reflect on how they complement each other. If you have any comments, like on anything that I talk about in any of my videos, please make sure to put them in the comment section. I respond to every single comment because I don't get many child. But anyway, we're going to go on to the next episode. Um, if you have any reality shows that you're into and you want me to recap, just let me know. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.